Thank, well, thank you. you. Very good. I love it. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I've done over 700 shows since this show began, March 20th, 2020, and I think this is the earliest I've ever gone live. It's 7 a.m. Pacific time. It's also going to be the day of the latest I go live, 6 p.m. Pacific time, and that's because we're hosting a very special week or 10 days called the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle Week, because so many of you has asked for more delicious, healthy, low-fat raw vegan recipes, so we have 13 of the contributors to the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle demonstrating recipes from their books, which, by the way, if you get the bundle, it's $50. You get over 50 ebooks and courses worth $3,200. And this is all new material. It's nothing you have seen before because all the contributors had to create new material for it, including a holiday book. I'm a contributor to that one where everybody in the bundle contributed recipes and that alone is worth 50 bucks. So today we have back on the show, Marco and Maria, they are broadcasting live. You can see how beautiful it is from Costa Rica. And they're going to talk a little bit about their contribution to their bundle and a little bit about detox. And then they're going to be making the breast, breast fix. I can't talk in the morning. Breakfast of champions, a raw vegan apple porridge. Please welcome Marco and Maria. It is so beautiful where you are. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> oh my God, it is gorgeous. So, so is this your first time contributing to the bundle? No, no, it's actually our second time. This is our second ebook. Or third, actually, we have other that is not have been released, but it's um, in our website. Um, yeah, this is a the, this is a seven day detox plan which is um, based into help to detox and helping detox in the body. And also it's easy, simple, and super enjoyable. Like the flavors there are not boring enough. Like, oh my God, I'm going into a detox. How horrible, like how boring. So this has like changed the whole game of detoxing. And I feel like it's very basic that everyone take at least one time a year to take a week to detox themselves from all the pollution, toxicity, and uh, just to help the body to keep working. Well. I think this is a good time of year. I think I think either during the holidays or before, because so many people do the opposite of a detox during the holidays. They go crazy with food yeah. and alcohol, and then they wake up January second, puffy and in pain and fifteen pounds heavier. And it's like, what happened? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we both definitely take that into consideration and I think it's detox too just because we're both we're both really into health and we have experience and uh, a background in that I have my master's in nutrition and Maria is a master herbalist and she's both with Dr. Morse so we know a lot about just nutrition in general and detox in gen uh, just the term can kind of have uh it kind of gets thrown around a lot sometimes and it's not used correctly like we're detoxing all the time yeah. your body's detoxing all the time so there's ways that you can change your lifestyle and your diet that could facilitate more, more and stronger detox. So you're getting, getting rid of more toxins Definitely. in your body. So, so much of this also depends on where you're coming from too. So if you're coming from um, just a, a, a mainstream standard, standard American diet, then just going on raw food is going to have definitely a, a strong detox because that's what, you know, that's what it does because there's so many minerals, so much water, so many vitamins, and that's going to help flush out so many, just like that pure raw food still has so much energy in it. It still has that life force in it that your body really needs to have all your organs function correctly. So just going on raw food in general is going to really facilitate that process. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, when, when I think about it, I used to work at the True North Health Center, I still sometimes do during holidays, when somebody is coming off a fast, the first thing they get is like raw food, like they'll get first, they'll get juice, and then they'll get watermelon before any cooked food is introduced. Oh, big time. You need to first hydrate your, your cells, your body, the organs, and just flush out everything. So the body needs like water, but no water in the simple form like in a more constructive way and that's why raw food has like uh so many um little channels of constructive like energy so that's why our body needs that stuff and the cooked food usually lost that when it's over when it's cooked uh over how many degrees 180. 
118 degrees, so it completely loses the, the chains of the amino acids. So, yeah. A lot of the enzymes, too. That's one of the great things about raw food is all the raw enzymes are still in it. Where When you cook things, a lot of the enzymes are, are depleted or completely eliminated. And then your body has to use their own reserves of enzymes and create more enzymes to process those foods. So that's why we, like sometimes we will be completely raw vegan. And then other times we'll eat mostly raw and also have cooked food. Um, but it's really important, I would say, to have at least one meal a day that is completely raw, preferably in the morning, because that's when your body is finishing its own detox. Like we talk about a detox that you just do every day is the one that you do overnight. So when yeah, you wait, like fasting, natural fasting, we do fasting every day because that's the body goes to sleep. That's a way of fasting. Natural, the body's like always detoxing in that way. But, um, you know, we sometimes add more hours to make a longer fasting, which is like a intermittent fasting. And that's what it helps to the body to release a lot of toxins. I just want to correct when I say the chain, I was just meaning the angstroms of like the food that it has. Like everything is just uh, the energy is... Um, measured by angstroms so the food has a natural high uh, amount of angstroms and when you cook the, the the more that the food is like dead and cook the level of the energy of the angstroms it gets like it can reach even just like 100 because it's completely dead food so just to clarify that and we're electrical beings too right so it still has all the life force when you talk about angstroms, mm -hmm. right? That's the life force in the food. And we are truly electrical beings. If we didn't have this electricity going through us, we would just be, you know, flesh. Mm -hmm. So it shows how important in our relationships with all food too. Oh, big time. Okay, so here's the thing. Cynthia says, I'm not really sure I understand what raw is. Oh, uh, raw. Yeah, I would say raw food is food that isn't cooked above 118 degrees i guess that would be like the standard well definition. we are talking we are talking about specifically about like uh raw plant-based diet because there you know you can be raw into sushi or it can be raw into meat mm -hmm. so and yeah a lot of people get confused like oh so i can eat like raw meat or i can eat raw milk no it's raw we are talking about raw plant-based food which is basically all the food that is um, from a plant base or uh, that is alive in the sense that is alive still. Of course. I guess a good example would be like, okay, for breakfast, if you just make a smoothie with like some bananas and greens and chia seeds and you just blend it all up in the blender and you drink that, that's all raw because there is no cooking done. It was processed a bit in the blender that you have. But if you go and you make oatmeal or you make pancakes, that would be a cooked meal because you're, you're heating those ingredients uh, much higher. That loses a lot of their life force that we've been talking about. Right. You know, I think a lot of people know they should or at least they want to eat more raw food. What, what do you think is the stumbling block or the challenge for people of, of not doing that? I mean, these are people that are already plant-based or vegan. Now, like, yeah, I should eat more raw, but like they don't. Is it because some people say because cooked food is addictive, maybe because it's more available or, you know, easier to, I don't think anything actually, easier than eating a piece of fruit. <laughs> it's actually funny because raw food is more easy than making a whole meal. Like, you know, as a chef, I think when I do meals, it's so many dishes, you have to prep so much for a cooked meal. And when you make a raw thing, you just like, you know, you, you process on the mandolin or like on the food processor and then it's super quick, super fast. Everything is super fast and it's ready super fast, which is very different when you make cooked meals. It takes a long time. You need to watch it. You need to move. You need to stir. You need to do this. So I think it's more in a mental stage where we are a little bit um, blocked to get to into the more life. Uh, force energy instead of like the cook that is not like that nutritious actually I think it's more like a mental and also like a, uh, the mind gets tricked by the oil the salt and the sugar that so many times is used on the cooked food so on the raw diet on the raw plant-based diet it's it's more simple 
we don't use oil, we don't use salt, and it and it gets more clean. So also your palate, your palate, yeah, yeah. Your palate gets more clean, and you can taste things much better and more rich, more natural. Like you don't need to use salt. Like you feel that the natural flavor is just perfect as it is. Like this, the taste of an apple is like super juicy, super rich. And I feel like you start to getting more connected to your sense because the salt and the sugar and the oil kind of dumb your sense, right? They block them. They block the organs too. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to say too that like our detox book doesn't have any salt, oil, and sugar because you could still eat raw food and add, those, salt, add yes. those ingredients. Um, so it's important to say that if you're doing a, a true detox, it's a, I, I would say that it's very crucial to leave those salt, oil, and sugar out. For sure. But I think, yeah, you brought up a lot of points. I think that's absolutely true. I think another um, topic to kind of get into, too, is just, like, the education of it. Because a lot of people aren't used to yeah. eating raw food. Like, most people haven't grown up where people are making raw food recipes. It's usually just put food all the time. And even if it is raw food, they're not even aware of it. So I think that's why uh, a bundle like this is so, could be really Super valuable helpful. for a lot of people. I mean, you could, especially when you're transitioning to a more raw food diet, it helps to have, you know, sushi and cauliflower wings and burgers that are raw, that are raw vegan and like, you know, smoothie recipes and stuff like that. It really helps. And even when you're into raw food already, it's really nice too to treat yourself. But I think the more that you eat raw food and the more you become accustomed to everything that you talked about, the tastes and the flavors or anything like that, the simplicity is one of the most beautiful parts about raw food. Um, you could eat mono meals and be completely full and satiated and just really enjoy it, which is just eating one food. Like we do that sometimes, you know, sometimes for breakfast, we just have papaya or we just have some mango and we feel amazing afterwards. So um, I think that's one of the amazing things about this bundle is that it gives you so many resources, like so many eBooks are in there. Like you're going to find tons of recipes that really resonate with you that you want to try out. And then so many other valuable books as well about food combining and other things that have to do with eating raw food as well. Yeah. Yeah. So people are asking, Tiffany asks, what's a typical day of eating look like for you guys? Well, it's, as Marco say, it's not like sometimes we always break the fast with a mono meal, always. Like this is a, it's been a lot for me since like, I don't know, to uh, 2018, like every day just breaking my fast with just a mono meal. Either it is pineapple, just pineapple, it is mango, just mango, it is papaya, just papaya. And when I'm juicing, I just do it juice, like just a straight juice. And, and then that's it for the breakfast. And for Mark, it's the same. Um, except right now. Except <laughs> right now, he's fasting. So it's another completely game change. But Yeah, we also like to, you know, practice what we preach too, because we feel like it's important to do detoxes, and cleanses um, periodically, because so many people, they've just eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner their entire lives, right? And they've never given themselves a chance to, to their digestive system to relax for a little bit. To rest. To, to rest. take a break. Or so much energy. Like most of the energy that your body uses is used for digestion. So when you're able to give your system a break, that's why people go to a true health or center. That's why I'm doing a water fast right now. That's why Maria does cleanses. And she did a cleanse earlier this week as well. Um, it just like your body thanks you. Your body needs that. It's like having a, a car and never changing the oil or just riding it all the time. What do you think is going to happen to it? Like the engine is going to break, gonna break down, like things are going to break down. So you have to, you have to like, think about like, this is your vehicle. This is the only vehicle you have in this lifetime. So it's very easy to get caught up and never really think about that, that this is the only vehicle that you have and to, to treat it well. And it's really a, a form of self-love too. Definitely. So yeah. And and to take care of like when you are uh you know, some people start to care when they get old, but no, we should start caring since we are, you know, kids. Like mm -hmm. uh the habits that we take are always conscious, not like, okay, no, not not today. Today I'm just gonna like enjoy whatever the meal it is. Like I feel like every day we have to take conscious deci decisions about what we put in our body. So that's 
one of the keys that I feel is basic in my life. Also. Nice. Nice. Well, I see that you have a Vitamix Splendor. Would you say that that is a must-have tool for people that are considering doing an, an all-raw diet? Yeah, I, I definitely think people can't even handle with a Nutribullet. Nutribullet. Mm -hmm. They're not a Patros, uh, how do you say it? me or how do you, I don't know how it's the word. Or I program. They are not a sponsorship, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but neither. Not sponsored, yes. And I and I also think with the Nutri Ninja it's possible too. So those of two like little blenders, you can make it happen too. It's actually I would like one of those little blenders because you know this jar of the the these vitamins is huge. So sometimes you want to make a dressing that is just like really a quarter of a cup or a, half a cup or a cup. And this is huge. So I feel like those little meat nutri blenders are super helpful to make dressings or like, you know, like a warm soup, uh, raw, and things like that, that you just need a little space. So yeah, but they, they can do it with any of those or these. The reason is because you need sometimes a lot of um, uh, power. power to blend stuff like dry things dry dates or dry food or frozen fruit if you want to make an ice cream with frozen bananas or frozen strawberries like you need kind of a power because with a regular blender it's going to be hard to you know just go through. absolutely i mean i would definitely like recommend it 100 percent even even if you're not into raw food, just in general, a Vitamix is an amazing tool to have in your kitchen. Definitely. And I mean, this one is relatively new for us. I think it's like a year or two old, right? Yeah. A couple of years old. Um, but my mom had her Vitamix, I think, for like, like 15 years or something. And like it was it was rocking and rolling all the way. She just like changed the, the top one time and that was it. So talking about before about how your body is a vehicle, like if you have some okay. money, I'm sure you could... Uh, well, it depends where you are in the world and how much financial availability you have. But this is getting a Vitamix is an amazing investment in yourself and taking care of yourself. So maybe a good gift for Christmas if you are thinking about investing in something that go. will be a really good oh. um, equipment for your lifetime. Big time. So, yeah. Put it on your wish list. <laughs> <Or Christmas. laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of the uh, people into raw food are doing some kind of vacuum blender now or some kind of with the Vitamix that's super helpful too and I feel like uh, we want to get that too because what it is is like take out the air so the food get less oxidized right mm -hmm. because when you blend it without a speed it gets oxidized so it will be good I just think you know just to slowly transition to one thing and another thing because it's kind of a lot of if you just do all on one but they can check also vacuum um vacuum blender so they can check the information before they purchase even the vitamins because i think they offer some options with the blender and the vacuum together so maybe that's better instead of just getting these separate and the vacuum separate so yeah nice, nice. yeah also too like if if you're making a smoothie or you're making anything in the Vitamix, we try and like blend it the least amount as possible. Yeah, yeah. Just so, like counting, counting like, a, you know, 10, 10 seconds. And it's super fast because, mm -hmm. because the motor of the, the power of the motor is very strong. So mm -hmm. you don't need even like to blend it for so long there. Yeah, you can see how if it needs to be blended more or not, but try and do the minimal amount possible as possible. So it oxidizes the least amount. And then also like try and eat your food right away when you make something in the vitamix like don't let like, it like say if you have to like you're making something for work or something like that you know that's fine because you know you need to prepare ahead of time but if you're gonna like make something try and make it and eat it right away because that's when it's gonna have the most nutrients that's when it's gonna have the most life force in it so it's best to consume it right away yeah nice let's see if there's any more questions ah uh, sis goes yes to raw vegan now you're on my level 
Do you think it's yeah. getting more? Well, you think it's getting more pop? I know that like in the, you guys are so young. I don't even know how old you were in the, two, the early 2000s, but there was like a surge and it was so popular at that time. I don't know if you remember, it was about 20 years ago. There were raw restaurants everywhere, at least in California. Oh, wow. I do remember that. Ooh. I do remember that. just everywhere, everywhere oh, okay. in the, yeah, in the country, it was really big time. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. This has been a while ago. Like, uh, I don't know if you know, Dr. Alnor, Arnold Earth or like Dr. Sebi too. They were like well yeah, a while ago. And it's been, you know, for a long time. I think the raw diet's been for a long time. Um in Mexico there are like this doctor, it's called Chaya Michan. He was just into like just completely raw. That's how he was helping people to heal through so many stuff to avoid getting into uh surgery. So I think they have been in all the places, um, the ancient medicine have been a lot into raw to like a, a, the ancient Asian mm -hmm. medicine. So yeah, I think it's part of of human uh, process of like getting back into nature and connecting with our food and with the life food. I think now too, um, kind of like with COVID and everything that's happened over the last couple of years, people have had a really amazing opportunity to take time and reflect mm -hmm. on just themselves overall. And a big part of that is their diet too. And anyway. they've just been able to be in so much more control over what they put in their bodies as well, because most people have been at home. So you have much more, you know, control over what you eat. And I think people have started to make, as you said, that connection. I think people have started to reestablish that connection. So whether it's more of an interest in raw food in general, or just, it's just, diet in general i think i think there is a, a new wave happening where people are being much more conscious of what they put in their body and raw food is definitely coming to the forefront because, uh, because of that and the power that it gives to your body which is amazing like we want healthy kids we want healthy people and i feel like a lot of kids are getting like really paying the consequence of like you know um the parents having a really not healthy diet um, because they take on the genes of them and they take the genetic of the weak genetic from a bad diet. So yeah, I, the, I hope this bundle helps so many people to just be in a more conscious diet and they can help to their kids. Even if you, know, you have an illness, you can get healed through raw food diet. And this is super important, super powerful. And, and I know a lot of people know this already, but a lot of people totally ignore this. So I feel like it's, this is a good opportunity for, you know, a lot of people recover for anything. Absolutely. And I would say too, for a lot of times we overthink things in our brain. And I think it's just a great thing to just start. It's to like a lot of people want to like overanalyze things, but just start, start incorporating some more raw food into your diet. If this interests you, buy the bundle, find some recipes and, and make them. Like um, we all have a, a tendency, I know I have in my, in my lifetime to procrastinate, but now it's definitely a time for action and there's never a better time to start than now. So I would say, get into it. Like, even if it's something really simple, just- Or even if you action. start like, eating your breakfast just to be completely raw. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if for lunch or dinner, you are having, um, you know, a cooked meal, but just to start your day with raw diet, that will change completely mm -hmm. the game of your life. Like Absolutely. it will completely change your body. You will feel it, you will feel the life. So start your day with a raw meal, even it is a smoothie or just a bowl, uh, you know, and a smoothie bowl or just a food plate. Just start with a raw diet the day and give it a time to to your into your life to get used to. And even if you know for lunch you have some cook, but have that intention into your life of like a start with a raw meal, plant-based raw meal that is just fruits. Just do that and you will feel the change. Just with that little step, slowly but transitioning to. Oh. No, don't do don't do oatmeal because I know it's like it's been like used to people get used to, but a lot of people they start with oatmeal, and I don't think that's the best because your body have been in a in a fast for the whole night, 
and then you put something gluey, so it's not gonna help to eliminate, to flush. So you want to, right away after this big fast during of the night, you want to hydrate yourself so the body flush all the toxins out. And that will be helpful with a big bowl of food, either like pineapple or just mango, or the That's most funny. amazing thing, it's watermelon. So if you break the fast or your breakfast with watermelon, it's super amazing. You are gonna feel it in your body. You're gonna feel all these like um, hydration going into your cells, into all your organs, extremes, and feel like an amazing feeling. So I will just recommend to give you the opportunity for yourself to feel this, to experience this, and see the change after that. <laughs> well, Bouillette, who's watching live, who was a former guest on this show, says that he's going raw now, and he wanted to know if maca is raw and if you guys use maca powder. Maca. Yeah, we actually, <laughs> from a recipe, we are having a... Um, well, I don't know if it's exactly raw because the process, to, so this is maca that we were going to use for the topping, but that's optional. It's not on the recipe, but it's optional. But so the process for maca is a root and what they do is like they peel it or they like um, uh, grind it. And then after they dehydrate it, and then after they dehydrate it, they blend it into powder. That's what it is, maca. Uh, but you need to know the source. If it's completely raw, or, or or it was boiled and then dry and then and then uh, blended or pulverized, or if it's completely as the traditional um, way is to peel it, dry it, and blend it, and then it's powder. That's the traditional way. But maybe there are people, uh, you know, this the maca is coming from Peru, so. There are people that can be boiled and then process it and then pulverize it. So you need to just know where it's coming and how is the process, but usually it's completely raw. It's a root and it's very beneficial uh, for the brain and for the nervous system, sexual system, uh, sexual system. hormones, the, uh, and yeah, the, and the, the organs, mm -hmm. the sexual organs, and it's super good for uh, men and women. Um, it's very good. It's super good. I actually, besides of that, I have some mucuna powder in here, which is a bean, and it has so many properties too. It's a superfood actually. Maca is a superfood too. Um, you know, just people start to discovering a lot of these um, benefits of roots and veggies that they haven't found before, and now they're like, just oh wow, we just found it. <laughs> yeah. I think there's so many, so many things I want to touch on too. Like there's so many conversations that we could get really deep into because so many people eat raw food and a lot of times the things that they're eating aren't raw. So a lot of times like nuts aren't really raw. Yeah. Even like sometimes dates or a lot of things are pasteurized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you need so to be careful. There's yeah. definitely like, you definitely have to be really conscious and really know where you're getting your, Checking your sources from. from if you want to be truly raw because there's a lot of things that are heated or the you know the way that they're processed they are not raw anymore so if you're trying to be truly raw it definitely takes a lot more energy devoted to where you're getting your your food and especially your powders and things like that from yeah um, i would also recommend that if you are taking supplements like or superfoods like maca or Mucuna or anything like that it's good to take it for a period of time but also like you, need, you can't i wouldn't recommend taking it all the time like maybe take it every day for a couple of weeks or a month and then give your body your rest um, the same way that you would do with any sort of like uh, I don't know, more uh, supplement that has more force it's really essential to like let your body come back to homeostasis afterwards so if you're interested in taking maca take it for a couple of weeks to a month and see how you feel and then give your body a break and yeah then go definitely back into it again. just to check in yeah well I just want to talk about the bundle for a minute because people are saying, I don't know what book to choose. You don't choose a book, guys. You get all the books and there's over 50 of them, including programs that cost $2,000. You get them all. So you don't have to choose, you know, Marco's book or yesterday's guest book. You get everybody's book and they're all brand new. So at least click the link and check it out and see what you get because it's quite phenomenal what uh, they put together, if you ask me. 
Yeah, definitely. It's even worth it more than three thousand and two hundred dollars. The whole like the whole bundle is worth it that price. And right now it's like literally for less than a dollar per ebook, and you get all of them just for fifty dollars. So I feel like it's such an amazing collaboration in price. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so much worth it. Like I have like. I have been posting in my Instagram. You can check Maria Salud Holistica or Marco Ranzi in their Instagram. And it's like so many good recipes that are like, wow, just one book that so many that I have seen is worth it for the $50. Like, it's just amazing. Like how much uh, goodies you can get for them. I know we love just like going through the bundle ourselves and finding like this week before we went to the market, we're like, let's go through all the bundles and see what recipes we like. And then we can get all the ingredients so we can make them throughout the week. And we just like, which ones are we making so far this week? We're remember? making um, falafel. falafel salad. I wanted to try to make some hummus, raw hummus. I'm going to figure out how because there are no recipes for, but I guess I'm going to make one. And also the chicken, no, cauliflower, the cauliflower wings. Cauliflower wings. Uh, buffalo cauliflower wings. I want to make that one too. And uh, banana crepes, I think. Banana crepes and pancakes too. All raw, plant based raw. Uh, so, so, yeah, we're, we're enjoying some... the bundle, hopefully, as much as everybody else is, because we really, really enjoy making new raw pest recipes too, because a lot of times we keep it pretty simple. Yeah, we yeah. Don't we, don't, we don't get into the complicated. Yeah. Even if. Uh, you know, we sometimes do pizza, raw pizza mm -hmm. in the dehydrator, or we sometimes do wraps um, in the dehydrator too. But um, we try to keep it super simple because this is the way, living simple instead of like complicated or too much stress, do this, do that. The best way is simple. And that's why this or ebook, it's just all simple. You don't need to do big things. You don't need to prep for a long time. You don't need to like, shop so many things and like it's super simple and it's super tasty um yeah i will just recommend to check it out it's seven day raw detox um and it has a really delicious wrap on the, <laughs> the cover on the cover yeah i think it's nice too for people that are interested in it because we have it mapped out for each day so you know the recipes that you're yep. going to each day. You just like, all you really need to do is to go look at the ingredients, go to the grocery store, stock up, and then you're good to go. You don't really have to worry about anything else. So, And there are like less than, each recipe is less than like seven ingredients. So you can part, yeah. easily, easily have all of them probably at home already or just like mm -hmm. get it at the grocery store. It's not this crazy big list of like, 15, 20 ingredients. And like, I get really overwhelmed for those recipes. For sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of easy and delicious, I know you're going to make a recipe and we'd love to see that. But first, Bulliant, who asked the question about maca, said, how do you feel about a gel gelatinized, gently processed maca? Is that acceptable in a raw diet? Oh, wow. Interesting. I don't know actually how can you, how they how they are doing gel gelatin nice but, uh, yeah I totally will I don't know I, I I cannot say something about it because I don't know I just know the the regular process that they use that is raw it's just powder but you need to know the source because as you say it can be like uh, cook maca and then powderize so you just need to know the the process and the company and the, the way and everything that's it yeah i would i would do some research. some individual research and contact the company go to their website and see yeah. if there's anything on there like for instance we just uh bought a bunch of different seaweed and i wanted to make sure that it's it not radiated there was no heavy metals or yeah it wasn't radiated i contacted the company and they sent me their tests uh via email so that was able to to answer my question so i think that's um, very I think that's very um, important to always check the procedence of your product, mm -hmm. especially if you use imported stuff, right? If, if it's not from your country, you, you want it to know. And Mata is not for, not, it's not from the States, it's mm -hmm. from Peru. So 
you need to check that. Yeah. Great. Well, so what are you going to, are you going to make an actual like breakfast or second breakfast for us today? Yeah. Yeah. Actually we are going to make this. This can be also like a, you know, um, a snack after your breakfast or after you come back from the gym. It's super good. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, here in Costa Rica, we have. Uh, yeah. So first, we're going to chop up uh, the apples. And put them in. We have in the recipe. There's one apple. Because usually in the states, the apples are a lot bigger. Um, but here in Costa Rica, um, apples don't grow as big because it's just not as cold. Uh, but these are local apples in Costa Rica. They're little cute ones. So we have four little apples, which equals about one regular sized apple. So, um, what are we gonna do with this? We're just gonna, explain? yeah, we're just gonna throw everything in the blender. Like we talked about the ease and simplicity, we're just gonna chop up the apples a little bit. Uh, it takes longer for us to chop them up because they're so small and there's different ones. If you have a big one, you take, uh, try to faster. always look, look for the local or national product, product because, like in here on the market, yes, sir, they were like this big apples but they were no national they were from chile and first of all i don't know if those are like gmo or no and um i try to always buy local you know national from the country so uh, this is the apple from the country so it's even cheaper actually because mm -hmm. it's from here so they don't need to pay for importation yeah, I think it's really important to touch on too. Like we're talking about doing a detox, and there's so many ways that you your body you know takes in toxins, and one of them is actually through the food. Um, so buying organic is super super important when you buy local. It's a lot easier to find organic food to have a relationship with your local farmer or grow your own food, like we are doing here in Costa Rica, um, where whatever the capacity you have, because you could be doing detoxes, but if you're still accumulating a lot of toxins, whether it's through the pesticides on your food or the cleaning materials that you use or the deodorant you put on or you know, the pollution of the area that you live in, there's so many uh, factors that go into that. So it's really helpful to be conscious of the toxins that you're putting into yourself. So you're not just like, you know, going on a wheel and not really making improvements when you're really able to eliminate all the toxins in your life and then do a detox. That's where really true healing and regeneration comes. Yeah. Good. So we are uh, putting everything on the blender. So we make our own uh, almond milk. This is basically a uh, natural almond butter. Uh, so you just put like, you can make uh, almond milk with one teaspoon of almond butter and then water, and then you make almond milk. It's super easy. Or you just like soak almonds, you know, peel them. Or if you have a juicer that can make um, nut milks, it's super easy. You can do that too. Uh, you know, but the easiest is simple. So if you get a high quality almond a butter that is organic and local, and it's just simple almonds, you can just make your almond milk super easy instead of like buying packaging uh, almond milk. So we're going to put all these amounts, yep, half a cup. which is half a cup, and then dates. Yes, three dates. Three dates. And cinnamon. Mm -hmm. We're going to put some cinnamon in here. And the spices are recommended as you like it. I really like cinnamon. So I put like a, a, a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. I think I put half a teaspoon. But uh, you can put a teaspoon if you like much cinnamon. And you can also add uh, half a teaspoon of uh, uh, spice. How do you say? Yeah, all spice. All or you can also make it pumpkin uh, flavor, which is you can put a um, pumpkin spice, uh, like half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, and you can make it really like a 
a porridge of like pumpkin spice, right? Um, and that's it. Uh, you can also add some chia seeds if you want, or flax seeds, or seeds hemp seeds. seeds. This is really, really good for after the gym or any workout because it will give you like that, like fulfilling and also mm -hmm. will be super nutritious. Uh, so it's really, really good for, you know, after doing a workout. But at the same time, it's very simple. It's not that heavy. It will not make you feel like eating like oats that, I don't know, I, to me, oats make me feel like sleepy and like tired because of the digestion process. So yeah, this is super easy, simple. So we're gonna blend it for like five to 10 seconds max. And I will show you. You don't get the thing to scrape it out. Yeah. Or you can just use the spoon. And then you actually uh, can do less than that, less than the time that I did, because you don't want it to make a smoothie, right? Mm -hmm. You want it to make like a porridge. And I think I over, overdid it, overblended, because yeah, you want the texture of a porridge. Also, what do you think? No, I think it's still pretty good consistency, for sure. I like it more like a chunky. Chunky. Like more chunky. If it's porridge, I like more chunky. If it's a smoothie, I really like very blended. But you can see the texture already. It's super good. I would like to show you guys. You see the texture? Like a porridge. So that looks, that looks delicious. Oh, yeah. Put some and then toppings on. we're gonna put some <laughs> toppings as you see super simple super fast recipe uh very quick these are some bananas which bananas these are ice cream bananas ice cream bananas unfortunately in the states you're usually just getting one type of banana which is called uh cavendish yeah and they're they're so so for me like but when you come to a tropical place like so many we have so bananas. many different types of bananas here the bananas that we planted i think we planted six types of bananas here uh on our land and mm. that, that we're caretaking and yeah i mean like it's amazing the different flavors and textures and like colors like you're growing some red bananas too that i think are delicious and these ice cream bananas are really apple good bananas. there's apple bananas there's uh oh. so many uh datil that that's bananas. bananas. There's so like many different types dates, of bananas. Dates, banana. That's the name, dates. I wanted to show you the seeds of the bananas in here. I don't know if you see these bananas have seeds, mm -hmm. which usually on the Scandinavian uh, Cavendish. Cavendish bananas you cannot find anymore. Mm -hmm. So unless it's like um, original. That's another tip too. Trying to buy as many of your, your produce with seeds. So if you're gonna have watermelon or grapes, try and get it seeded. If it's seeded, it's more, it's yeah, it's it's more closer to its original state. Like we've hybridized and changed a lot of these foods, and a lot of times and that's why they don't have seeds or it's GMO. Yeah, one of the two things. And a lot of times when we hybridize them as well, we they have done it to increase the sugar content as well. So that's why um, you can have some problems if you're just eating like super hybridized just fruit all the time a lot of it is because they've changed the, the makeup of it um so it's really important to get especially watermelon and grapes like get them Super, seeded. Yeah, definitely yeah. get them seeded so we are gonna put some uh toppings i already put some bananas but you can add like two dates if you want more <laughs> and i'm gonna put on the top some maca powder right and some cacao powder or carob if you don't eat cacao but cacao powder is a super food too so i will take all the benefits of um, cacao powder and that's it you can add like mucuna that it's pretty good if you are doing workout post workout it's super super good and this is how it looks like i wanted to show you that looks delicious i would eat that for sure yeah <laughs> so that's 
what it is. I want to eat that too in a couple of days. <laughs> Not yet though. <laughs> yeah. That is it's so fun. Yeah. I, I don't know why people just seem to be obsessed with oatmeal for breakfast. And I, I, I don't like oatmeal. Number one, I hate the texture, but it's just, it just seems so heavy for the morning meal. I like, I eat vegetables, I for, bre- I eat vegetables for breakfast, you know? Nice. Yeah. You can make a green juice, you know, uh, vegetables like beets or uh, uh, carrots or like green leaves. A green juice is super powerful too for breakfast. I think yeah. it's also good as a, as a transition meal for a lot of people. Like if you're coming from just eating, say, cereal for breakfast or bacon and eggs, like when I work with clients, I think that's a really good way to transition because they still feel like that fullness, you know, of uh-huh. having a meal that's, uh-huh. that's very satiating, but it's, you know, you could almost have raw oatmeal. Like what I tell my clients is to soak them overnight. So like oat, do overnight oats and you don't add any um, artificial sweeteners. You just soak it overnight with some dates. And As some, a transition. Some Let flax seeds. Clarify. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's great for that. And if you are eating, I don't say, cause I do a lot of uh, athletics and I stay very active for people that are very active too. Sometimes it is, a little better to have something that's a little bit more dense, dense. And because your diet because when you're exercising so much your metabolism is much more kicked into gear so um it does play a role sometimes but for for most people yeah i would definitely say it's a it's a transition meal but it, it, it could definitely play a role yeah well great thank you guys so much thanks for being part of the bundle thanks for doing this wonderful presentation the recipe looks amazing and you want to tell a little bit before you go about your retreat and you know where you live and what you do i'm gonna do yeah. okay <laughs> so yeah as as uh, chef aj has said in the beginning we are in costa rica um we're on the pacific side of this beautiful country overlooking the ocean which maybe we could actually show you the view before we go just a little bit we'll try and turn the computer so you can see the ocean um we're about 30 minutes from the beach and we have a retreat center here, a small retreat center uh, where we hold a maximum of three people at a time. They come from anywhere for a week or up to three weeks. And we really help customize what they're looking for because it's small and more personal. We're able to really cater to their needs, whether they're looking for something that's all raw, whether they're looking for something that's really detoxifying, or if they're just looking for, you know, uh, a plant-based vacation type of retreat as well. So we're really able to, to customize the retreat for them. Um, and yeah, and we both uh, work with clients as well that are interested just online that are interested in changing their health, detoxification, um, getting rid of or lowering any sorts of disease or illnesses that they have had, getting off medication, losing weight. Uh, we both specialize in that as well. Anything else? You want to say? No, just that. Like, uh, I feel like this is a very beautiful place, Costa Rica as a place to take a break, uh, come and relax, and also enjoy all these um, amazing tropical fruits that are all year long, which is amazing. That's one of the things that I love it. Like we have mangoes uh, almost all year long, which is very hard in other countries. Like I'm from Mexico and I know the mango season is just one time, but here you can have mangoes all year long, which is incredible. Because there are so many types, so they when one's finished, the the other type of the mango star, and then when the other is finished, the other type of mango star, and then it's incredible. Also, pineapples, organic pine- pineapples are like super good in here. Yes, so many yes, yeah, fruit. mangosteen, even durian. <laughs> and also too, like we are in the process of eventually being completely self-sufficient and growing all our own food. Uh, But at the moment, our greenhouse is pumping. So you would get all your greens and a lot of your veggies straight from our greenhouse. And then we source the rest of the foods that we give to our guests here from local and organic uh, farmers that are in the area. Yeah, definitely. Like even if we sometimes for treats, we make like, I like to make treats sometimes. So I make muffins or like uh, cupcakes. And even with that, I use um, banana flour that is from here local. So and it and it makes amazing muffins and the texture is great. And it's just like banana flour. Yep. And I think a lot for a lot of people too, it's really nice 
because I used to come to Costa Rica on retreats. And that's one of the reasons why it inspired me to, to do this. And it's so nice in the winter, like in January, February, March, because I'm from New York in the Northeast, to be able to come to a warm spot and go to the beach and go to the waterfalls and just like soak up the sun. And it like rejuvenates you. It completely like changes your whole winter. Because I know that Definitely. I was like in the Northeast and I was like, man, in February, I was like, oh, see, when's the, see. the sun? Oh, let's see. You yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Vicky's so asking really what? I'm so sorry, but Vicky's asking, what's the name of your retreat? It's in the show notes, but when people watch on Facebook, they don't see the show notes. Oh, the Healing Sanctuary or uh, El Santuario de la Salud. But you can find it also at uh, the Healing Sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. The website? There's, yeah, El, El Santuario de la Salud yes. is the, dot com is our website. Um, yeah, I think if you, if you Google El Santuario de la Salud, which is the Healing Sanctuary or in Spanish, or you could find our, our Instagrams as well. Or you could contact Marie us. Ramsey. My Instagram is Marco underscore Ramsey. And your Instagram. Eh, Maria Salud Holistica. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you could shoot us an email as well at el santuario de la salud at gmail.com. And yeah, we would love to. Um, Maybe to, it's easy to for, you. for you to find uh, Marco Ramsey because his name is so short. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find him in Instagram or Facebook, and then he can give you all the information. If you don't find a website because it's in Spanish. Right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank and you so much. Make you you, yeah, absolutely. If they're interested in what you do, you did another episode I can link to in the show notes. They can watch another video where you did another uh, recipe as well. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. We want to show you the video. You want to? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, if please. Please. From here. I don't know if you can see from here. I'm plugged into the fiber optic. <laughs> the avocado tree might be in the way. Yeah. We'll post. We'll post some photos. We'll post some photos um, about the view. It's super beautiful, <laughs> and the sunset is incredible too. Do they even no. So beautiful. What kind of what kind of critters do you have? The critters. <laughs> uh, well, um, small critters or big critters. Because... Geckos. <laughs> Lots of geckos. <laughs> uh, as far as wildlife goes, we have a lot of howler monkeys that come, toucans, all different types of um, butterflies, hummingbirds, tons of birds. Actually, the the land that is right past um, our land is actually a bird sanctuary. So we're bordering that as well as some waterfalls nearby. And there's just like, there's an abundance of wildlife all the time here. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really special place. And we're, we're glad, we feel really blessed to, to we, we don't like to say that we own land. We like to say that like we're the caretakers of it um, because we feel like you know, who could own Mother Earth, you know? No so I think there's a spiritual aspect to that as well. And like people, we don't want to feel like we're the ownership of it. Uh, when it comes to papers and legality, that might be true. But we feel like we're the caretakers of this land. And we're doing a lot of regeneration that we've learned through permaculture here. And really just like there's a large part of the land that is just rainforest. And we are completely preserving and honoring that area and not touching it at all. And we're, and we're surrounded by a lot of rainforest, too. So it's a really sacred place. Great. Well, thanks so much, guys, and best of luck to you at your retreat. I hope people will come and check it out. It looks absolutely beautiful. Thank yeah, you so much, thank AJ. You. Thanks for having us. and thank oh, you it's, for doing shows. it's my pleasure. Thank thanks you. all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in 10 hours at 6 p.m. Pacific time today when another wonderful chef from across the globe, Raw Chef Yin, is going to be making Tom Yum Soup. I've never had that raw. Have you guys ever had that raw? Oh, no. <laughs> well, what, Steph says, what, what is the date of your next retreat? Oh, we uh, have open dates from January 1st mm -hmm. to January 27, I think so. And February are kind of like a book, but you can, I feel like if people check with us, we can tell them the uh, availability. Yep. 
because we have already booked uh, some dates in different months. So it will be great if people get in touch with us for, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Great. Thanks so much. Take care, guys.